Good morning. My name is Marley Mulebar. Most of you know who I am in this group, um, and if you don't, welcome, and I would like to introduce myself to you. I'm a mom of four, married. I have two girls and two boys. Um, for the last couple of years, I have been on a mission to help women just really gain self-confidence and really get... Um, have that confidence built on God's word. What, what does scripture say about us as women? How can we fight our battles, the battles of you know marriage issues, the battle of motherhood, the battle of, battle of comparison, body image? How can we battle all of those things? Well, the best way to battle them is in God's word. But if we don't know God's word, if we don't know his promises, if we don't know what we actually, you know, the treasures that we hold as his children, then we are weak and wimpy and we aren't able to fight to the full potential. So the website, which is Marley mulebar.com I have been doing like digital scripture studies and I'm like you know 30 to 31 day scripture studies over different topics for a while and a um, blog that has like encouraging devotionals videos and um, video devotionals all these things right well then I started to compile them in January I really had a calling on my heart to start these scripture study journals where it's a monthly subscription where it's not just and um, 30 31 days and it stops it's gonna you're gonna be able to get it every month right well what happens whenever you feel like you're just stepping in and being obedient the devil says no girl I don't think so and just puts all these roadblocks in your way so everything from um, parenthood issues to um, just the season of life issues, printing issues, uh, you name it, we've kind of ran into that. So in January, the first month, and so the end of December, I declared I'm going to start doing this monthly for these women. And um, I had all these subscribers, all these excited women, and they were being blessed. That is the most amazing thing about it. They were in God's word daily. They were allowing to, you know, learn how to apply scripture daily to your life. So you read scripture and you're like, well, what do I do with it? Well, they were actually taking it and putting action to it. And so their lives were changing and there was healing. There was, um, you know, difficult things that they were going through. They were able to have peace and comfort from them. And so the devil says, okay, hold on, you're doing it and it's working. Then, okay, I'm going to stop it even more. So then the printing production we had issues with that and but I am so grateful for each and every subscriber because y'all have been patient with me and y'all have been kind and loving so this is kind of what a scripture study is so a scripture study and um, over the last few months and um, these are the ones that you've been able to see so it is step into your purpose and then we have um, God's love for you and then we've done radiate. So these are the ones that have actually physically been printed. If you can see it, the light is kind of reflecting. So what these are is you actually have a daily, a daily verse over the topic. And so it's anywhere between like five to seven verses. It's not a ton because it's more about qu uh, quality, what you're actually able to apply and put into action versus quantity, like just, you know, reading tons and tons of chapters and then you get done and you're like, what did I even read, right? The next page is like keywords and definitions, and um, scripture breakdown and application, how to apply what you just read. Then you have options to, like the scripture takeaways. You can make notes here, you can make doodles, um, and your goals, like steps to apply the scripture to your life. So now that you know what it is, you know the meaning, you know how to apply it, what can you do in your daily routine that will change to be able to fit this now in? Because <laughs> I know, like especially as a mom of four and this season of life that I'm in with busy busy childhood, um, there's not a lot of extra time, right? So what can you do, what can you get rid of to be able to add what God really wants you to do? And there's parts that you can actually take a bunch of notes, scribbles, you can draw pictures. I'm a very creative person. I'm a very visual person. And so I love to have images um, that relate to whatever the scripture is to help me visually remember that. And there's also sections for reflect and prayer. Really a quiet time every day for God and to get into that that moment of just being planted and allowing God to grow you. Because when we Every day when we are watered with the living water, when we have the sun, which is, you know, the son of God in our presence every day, because of him, we are able to be born again, to be able to be refreshed. You know, every morning we have new mercies and new grace. And so to be able to walk into that and to be just be hugged by God every morning and sit in time with him is amazing, right? 
can make this as long or as short as you want, depending on how what you really want to get out of it, right? Um, but this is kind of what we do on a daily basis um, for this scripture study. So for April, <laughs> there's still a few printing issues, but we're supposed to be able to get April's actually printed um, this week. So by the end of the week, thank goodness. So with that being said, um, I want to start doing in this group, this is called a scripture study journal club. So whether you actually subscribe, where you, I still want to go over it because what I think is huge, and I just, I have learned this over the few, last few months, like the aha moments or the light bulb moments that I call them that you get out of scripture, mine isn't always the same as yours. Yours isn't always the same as mine, but it is so neat to see the differences that everybody has, the different ways God speaks to them through Scripture. So this is going to be a community or a club to be able to be planted in Scripture with each other daily, to be able to um, talk about what you got out of that scripture, what it meant to you, how, tips for applying that. Because there will be days when I'm stuck and I'm like, okay, I know I need to apply that to my life, but how do I do that? And another friend can actually come in there and say, you know what, I'm actually doing this, this, and this. That may be something you can, you know, put into your habits or in your routine or change. And I'd be like, that is amazing. So we were so, we were created to do life together. We were created to be a light for each other. So that's what I want this club to be. So you know, I have probably should have started April 1st with this. I probably should have done all the things, but you know what? Today is April 12th and it's a Monday. So we are going to start because God can move mountains no matter when we start, as long as we just We're start. actually going over for April. I'm going to read today's scripture and then I'm going to go over it kind of um, what I thought about it and some of the keywords and definitions and then in the comments let's discuss it what did you think about it and um, how are you going to maybe apply that to your life what does it mean to you I'd love to do that and if you have any prayer requests um, please put those in the comments too because I want this to be a, a, a community and a tribe that we love on each other through prayer. If you are going through something, it can even be an unspoken prayer request. If you feel comfortable about sharing it, maybe not all the details or all the details. I just want to be able to pray over each other as a community because there is so much power in prayer. And um, just this morning, and um, there's, there's a couple that I've been praying over for a while and she had just a breakthrough in their marriage over the weekend, over, a, over the last couple of weekends, just different things have happened. And the light that just of just the goodness of God just reflected off of her. And it was just an amazing thing to see this morning. Um, and that can be for anybody. So, but it happens in the power of prayer and being there for each other. So today is April 12th, and this is the scripture study for today. So this is the scripture. It says, I am writing to encourage you to fan into a flame and rekindle the fire of this spirit spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. So never be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor be embarrassed over my testimony, imprisonment, but overcome every evil by the revelation of the power of God. This resurrection life and drew us to himself by the holy calling on our lives. And it wasn't because of any good we have done, but by his divine pleasure and marvelous grace that confirmed our union with the anointed Jesus even before time began. This truth is now being unveiled by the revelation of the anointed Jesus, our life giver who has dismantled death, obliterating all the effects on our lives and has, manifest, and has manifested his immortal life in us by the gospel. And that is 2 Timothy 1 through 6, the Passion Translation. I love the Passion Translation because I just feel like it goes so much deeper and I can relate more on like today's kind of language, right? More of a modern concept to scripture. So that was really powerful, right? Super, super powerful. What I like to do whenever I read scripture, I like to read it a couple of times, go back over it, and then really see what words pop out. So the words that popped out to me were rekindle, dismantle, and manifested. So what I do is I go to Google and I just search literally meaning of, and then I put in the word. And then I just kind of figure out, look at a couple of different um, you know, versions of the definition and really get a good concept of what it's saying. So rekindle 
is to kindle or spark something again, to try again. So at the very beginning of this scripture, it says, I'm writing you to encourage you to fan into a flame and rekindle the fire of this spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands upon you. So there is something that is inside of you that you may have tried to do multiple times. There is something that is longing inside of you that you feel like, you know, this is my thing. This is what sparks me. This is my desire. But you have kid responsibilities. You have failed. Too many years have gone by. Too much time has passed. And you feel like, I I just can't do it. It's never going to work. I am a failure. It's never going to be that way. I didn't get that degree when I was supposed to. I am, you know, don't work at the job that I want to. I gave up my dreams and I'm stuck in this nine to five. I want to be self-employed, you know, all the things, right? Or I've given up on the dream of being a mother or I am a mother and I have failed my children in X, Y, Z way. Well, guess what, sister? God is telling you today, whatever desires are on your heart, whatever the person that you want to become, the person that you want to be, God is saying, rekindle that. He is there to push you and help you to help spark that flame that is inside of you. If you will just say yes, God will help you walk along his path. He will guide you and he will help you and he will help get you excited, start that fire, start that burning desire once more for that idea. So don't forget and don't ever let yourself stop trying again because God says in his word that he is there with you every single time that you try and try again. And the thing about trying again is most of the time, When you try again, you're not trying what you did before. So really, it's not that you failed before. You you actually won because you figured out what doesn't work. So you can do do something else that possibly will work, possibly will be the key thing. Or if that second thing, A, you know, plan A, B, C, and D, if none of those work, then you still have a full alphabet of, of ideas that you could try to to be successful. So so you didn't fail the first round, you just need to try again and you figured out what didn't work is what it was, right? For the next word that popped out to me, the definition of it, dismantle. It was disconnect, destroy, or to uh, strip of a covering. And I thought that was so unique when I saw that. It's strip of a covering. So that is exactly what Jesus did to us. He stripped us of the um, you know, this sin that was just holding us down, this sin that was keeping us abandoned from God, that was keeping a separation in our lives. We have been stripped. We have been made clean. We all that once in, that once just had their thumb on us now is destroyed so we can walk in freedom. But the thing about it is, sister, this world wants us to stay locked in. This world wants us to stay stressed out. This world wants us to, wants us to stay anxious. And I lived through that. That is, if you've heard my testimony and my story, I have dealt with anxiety-based depression my entire life. I actually got shingles when I was in eighth grade over um, this just perfectionism that I have, have, have had to battle my entire life, right? Well, the thing that I love about this demand, this dismantle and the strip of the covering, I don't have to worry about being perfect anymore because Jesus is perfect for me. I don't have to worry about comparison anxiety or, or my failures anymore because he has destroyed that. He has ripped those labels off of me that the world tries to put on me, and he has replaced them with grace, with love, with kindness, with worthy, worthy calling. I mean, somebody who has failed, 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 and continue to fail as hard as I try, he still gives me grace every day, and he still says, you know what, I will help pick you back up. I will hold out my hand, lift you up, and let's spark, rekindle again that fire with you. So I love that. He strips away anything that the world tries to label on us that that covers us and and doesn't allow our light to shine. Our our thing that, you know, God puts so special and unique inside of us that covers us, he stripped that away and and allows us to be the light that God truly wants us to be. So the next word is manifested. So the definition of that is display or show by one's act, a demonstration. So Jesus did the ultimate demonstration of what it means to truly love someone else, to give their life for someone else. But he also did the ultimate demonstration of how we're supposed to live our lives. He loved others. He didn't compare. He he went and talked to the sinners. He helped them. He fed the hungry. He was genuine, and that is so important. He was unique and genuine to his purpose and his calling. So I just I think that's so unique that. 
we need to look at him as a whole picture and not just the cross was so, I mean, traumatic and amazing and the best gift we could possibly ever, ever receive. But there was also a demonstration of just his life in general, everything that he did. And, um, you know, the books of the Bible, what would the, the acts that he did on earth or the stories that you could say about Jesus, it would not, you could not contain them in, in an actual book. It would be so many books that it would just fill up libraries and libraries and libraries. So the gospel writers actually that wrote the accounts of Jesus just showed us what we needed to know. And it's so amazing what you get when you actually read his life. So I can only imagine how much more amazing it was if we had had all the stories, right? So look at his life as a whole and see how he demonstrates his life and mimic that is basically what we're supposed to do. He has dismantled anything that would cause us to not be able to walk in his light and rekindle that purpose that we have for our lives. So those are my takeaways um, of this verse and kind of how, how it sparked to me. So um, one of the, the next page in here, you actually have the choice. It says scripture takeaways and it says, I'm challenged, convicted, encouraged, or reminded. So after reading this, I'm a couple of things. I am challenged to be more, to to allow God to rekindle things in my life that I have put off or thought that I was too old or I've already let go or I've already failed in parts of my life. And I'm, I'm going to allow him to rekindle those desires and allow me to get excited about them again. Um, and I'm convicted in do I really demonstrate Jesus here on earth? Do do I really walk in the way that he would want me to do? Or do I give in to anger, you know, disappointment, to bad attitudes? Um, you know, am I really being the person I, I should be? The demonstration and um I am reminded, today I was reminded the dismantle, reminded of being stripped of that covering, the, the labels of the world, we are stripped off of us when he died on the cross. And I need to wake up and remember that every day. Whatever thing that I start saying about myself, you know, you have that that record that plays in your mind. You're not good enough. You're not worthy enough. You know, the calling, you've already, you've already um, ruined it. You know, you can't go back. That's not true. That is not true. And and we can do anything through God who strengthens us. So I'm ready to be rekindled and re-strengthened. So those are my goals. So steps to apply this to my life. So, okay, so I know what I need to do. So what are my steps? I'm choosing, I'm going to be more intentional with sitting and listening to God. Um, I know throughout the day I like to listen to music or I like to turn on the TV or different things when it's a little bit quiet time or like when I'm in the car, if it's I'm just running to the store or whatever, you know, you, you play some music and it's really good. I'm going to try to be a little bit more intentional, maybe not every single time, but to be more intentional about um, really just listening, having quiet time for God, because when we have just quiet time and speak the words, Lord, I'm listening, you know, your servant is listening, please speak. So when we ask him to speak to us, he will. And so just, I'm, I'm going to try to have more moments of just quiet time to allow God to speak and, and rekindle that fire so I can walk and be, walk into the demonstration that he had here on earth and be more like him. Just, that's how I do it every day. That's how I hope hope that you would be able to do it. That's how, when it sits on more of a personal level, when it's broken down, when you can understand it, you may not have it, you know, the scripture word for word, but what you do remember is the key words that pop out. And sister, the key words that pop out to you, that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you, that your life and the things you have going on in the season that you're in, those are important. And that's the message that he wants to get, wants you to get. So whether your words are the same as mine today or they're different, I just want you to to be encouraged to listen to them and um, allow God to speak through them. So um, what I'm going to try to do <laughs> is um, at least Monday through Friday or as much as I can Monday through Friday have a little video of kind of like this. It'll be a little bit shorter. This is a longer video to get started. I had some, you know, explaining of the journals to do, but um, anywhere between five to 10 minutes a day, just to be able to get on where I, we can discuss um, that day's scripture, the 
uh, keywords and definitions and the application to life. And so in the comments, then we can just have just a communication of how we can help each other, what each other got out of it, and just be bold and courageous in standing in God's word um, and using the power of his word. The armor of God, the only weapon in the armor of God is your sword, and that is the word of God. And so if we don't have that planted deep in our hearts, if our roots are not strong, then when the storms of life come, they'll be like my poor little little hydrangeas that I just planted a couple of days ago. They'll be wilted and crazy when the storms of life come. And where I live, the storm, right after I planted them, the winds came and it was like 30 mile an hour wind. So they were, they want to have one of them that's, I'm trying to baby and bring her back to life. But I, um, I'm so thankful for this group. If you have a friend that you would love to bring into this group, please share this group with them. It is a free group. You are not required to actually purchase the journal. You're not required to have it digitally, um, like a, the PDF or the printed version. You're not required to have any of that. Um, but you won't necessarily get Monday, you know, all 30 days or any of that. It'll just be a discussion as I go and just encouragement um, to be planted. But if you would like to be a part of the subscription, I would love to have you. Um, um, a part of that community too. So y'all have a great day and thank you for this group. I am just so grateful for your patience, for your love and for your continued support and in all the endeavors that I, and all the new projects and things that I constantly have going, I will tell you the women who have been so grateful and gracious um, during the process, the printing issues and the things we've had um, for March and April, I am just so grateful to you. So um, anyways, um, I hope you have a blessed day. And